So, we've now started making a game. However, everything is still in the same file and it is really getting a very long file. I think in the end we'll have almost 100 lines of codes and scrolling through this takes a while. You could of course use shortcuts, but still we want to make this a little bit shorter and nicer to see um, or to, to browse through. And this is where we'll use the fact that we already have a class that we can actually encapsulate something and put it into different files. Now before we do that, I'll um, go for one problem that we kind of avoided up until now, which is the fact that we use lines and calls. Um, those are two uh, variables that we can use from the ncurses library um, that are directly used in line without line really knowing where those come from. The nicer way of doing that is, for instance, in the constructor, providing those as integers. So we have uh, lines and a calls um, variable, and those from then on we'll, we'll, we'll use instead of these lines over here. Now, if we do that, it makes also sense to use these as private members of the class. So the class line kind of holds um, a variable or two variables for the size of the screen on which the squiggly line should be um, drawn. So that uh, we usually have then also here lines and calls. Now, in this case, this is a little bit confusing. Um, because here we'll have um, arguments that we'll use when creating the line. I can already start doing that uh, down where we start the function. So here we have our line. Instead of having a default constructor, we'll say here that we, at this point, provide the, uh, the columns and the lines. So we have a squiggly line that we create here um, on the screen with size, lines, and calls. There we go. Um, so that in the class is a little bit confusing. And this is why um, some people, um, and I tend to do this as well, whenever there's uh, variables for the class that only internally are used and that never should be seen by other developers, you basically have an underscore that starts all of this, showing that this is the own class is variables. Now, there are other ways of doing this and there are other uh, ways of, of, of simplifying this, but this is, I think, a nice way of doing that without losing too much screen real estate because that is something that we are really um, uh, careful of as well. So, we, the, provider, the user provides in the constructor already these two variables, lines and calls, which eventually are coming from n curses, and those we capture here locally um, as underscore lines and underscore calls. So we basically assign underscore lines to lines and we assign underscore calls to calls. So we just copy those values into the new uh, variables that are now here stored within the class. Um, and that we need to do also, or the underscore thing we also need to do for all the other member functions of our line that we have. Almost there. We need to also replace these. And now we have basically um, all member functions of line and the class line itself um, completely independent from uh, the ncurses library. So what do we have here? Lines. Let me see. Lines, I think. No calls. There we go. I hope I didn't forget anything. I just see that I made a mistake here with the random function. I have four possible color values that I could go for. Um, but this is something that we'll uh, fix later as well. So for now, um, this first part over here, we could move out into a new file. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to write it out as, um, we have already line.cpp, let's write them um, scroll. 
for game as our main function. Yes. And in our main function, we have basically a scrolling game. We indeed include the ncurses library there. Um, we use the random function in the main function as well. But all of this can go away. And we start immediately with the main function. So there is the main function. We immediately use the ncurses library. And here we will um, start with creating the squiggly line as before. So this is something that is completely set. Um, if we then go to uh, the old line CPP, we can basically get rid of all of this over here. So we'll start first with um, creating one file for the class, and this is the header file. Um, let's write this out as line.h in this case. Um, so the header file basically just includes the standard library for uh, the random function. So that uh, we can use this random function in the in the member variables of uh, the member uh, members of line, and that's about it. So it basically just uh, defines what our class line should look like. Everything else can go. Uh, yeah, we can save. Now I can see that we uh, forgot here the lines and calls arguments for our constructor. Um, but other than that, I think this is something that uh, works. The fact that we still have a wrong description here is something that we should have line class to draw a squiggly line. There we go. Now we can add a pane here. This is something that um, uh, the cheat sheet on the Moodle uh, website uh, is showing you um, to also add other things. Later we will uh, look at that. Let's start over here with um, the member classes of line. So line.cpp, as we've seen, uh, should have the same description, I would say. So a line class to draw a squiggly line. There we go. Um, and in this case, um, the line class should only include the header file. So it includes line.h. So this file over here basically shows us what uh, we're going to implement. It's kind of like a contract. Um, and over here we are going to implement the member functions that we promised um, to program. In this case we have our constructor over here, we have our get y position and get color over here, um, etc. and the cycle um, member function as well. So if we save this into the CPP file, those two form one particular unit. So the CPP file for line is quite short. Oops. We need to get rid of the, the main function that will come later into its own. So these two functions basically describe what the line class is about. If you look at the header file, you see what the class uh, is promising to implement. And for most people using this class, this is enough already. Um, and for us, as the ones that are developing this class, we need to hear, show, or give all the statements for all the member functions that appear uh, on the left side here. Good, so let's save this. And over here, where uh, we can get, then go to, let's see what I had here, scroll game as our main function. There we add the ncurses library um, for drawing on the screen. Um, I think we also use the random function here. That's very uh, short. And then of course we will also need to tell that we are going to include the line.h. And this is in this case enough. So as soon as we include line of h, we know that we are going to use a particular class called line. Um, and this is ha having certain functions. We don't need to provide the CPP because that is going to be doing, it will be done by the linking later. Right, so now we have our main function, which is still quite long. We'll use a couple of tricks later to make this shorter. But now we have everything divided up into its separate files. 
we have the descriptors of the line class into the header file and into a CPP file with all the implementations. And we have our main scroll game, which uses the line class as uh, a class on its own. Now, how does this work now? Um, how do you compile all of this together? Well, this is going to be done into several components. Now, we use G++ or the compiler for everything. And first, we're going to say that we're going to compile line.cpp. Now, if you would just do this, it would probably come up with a problem. The fact that um, it can't find the line, so we're, we're still in the wrong directory here. So I have to go to the game directory where we currently are. And there we see indeed our line files, our header file and our CPP file, and the scroll game for the main uh, function. Now in this case, as uh, I'm going to do line.cpp, uh, um, we'll have lots of problems. Whoops. I seem to have forgotten something in line.cpp still. Let's see where that went. There we go. Ah, here. Didn't go low enough. There we go. Um, so let's try that again. Right. So now the problem is that um, it can't find the main function because of course we don't have a main function line.cpp. Line.cpp already includes a link to line.age, so it knows where to find the contract for all of this. The fact that, for instance, certain private uh, variables can be addressed, um, but it doesn't find the main function. And the way we do this is we um, say that we're going to compile it only and not provide anything else. If we do that, then in our directory, we suddenly have a .o file, a .object file. This is something we've already skipped over quickly in the slides, but this is basically creating code, a bit like a puzzle piece, where we say there will be other things implemented, in this case, the main function. And that's exactly what we're also going to do <coughs> for the scroll game CPP file. So if you just do this, um, it won't work because it can't find all the uh, things, okay, the, the things related to the end cursor, but also all the things related to line. Um, so we're going to just say we're going to compile scroll game. And now we have two object files, the scroll, the scroll game.o file and the line.o file. Those are the two object files that we can then, in a second step, or in a third step, if you uh, think about uh, both of those, we can go and put those together. So we have our line.o file, our first object file, and our scroll game.o file. And those we're going to now output as an executable that we call game. And we should also still not forget the fact that we're using the ncurses library that we also need to um, a, a link here in this case uh, on the command line. So if you do this, oops, I want L too much here. Then somehow has a problem with N curses. I need a coffee this morning. Great. So now it worked. So as soon as we then execute our game, we have what we had before. This time, however, we have an uh, an actual executable, or uh, the main function is in one CPP file which describes everything that is necessary for implementing the scrolling game. We have one header file for the line class and we have one CPP file for the line class. And this way we separated everything that is uh, still somehow, that still was muddled uh, beforehand, where the line class, for instance, used calls and lines. In this case, this line class can be used by anyone else, even if they're not using um, our particular setup over here. They can use a completely different um, main file, a uh, main function, and in that main function can use a line the way they want to. Okay, so that is the first step that I wanted to show. The next step will be about making all of this in an automated way because all of this is now a lot of typing work. So for um, if anything is changed here, 
um, then what I'll first have to do, I'll have to create the object file for the line class. Then I'll have to create the object file for the scroll game. Then I'll have to uh, show that both those two object files belong together and should be linked together with the library and curses as well and put out as the executable game. Now these three lines are a lot of typing work. You could actually put them all behind each other, but this is a lot of work. And there, uh, for this, we have make files. So make files allow us to just quickly say make this and it will automatically compile everything that is necessary, redo the making of object files, and then creating your executable as you provide it into a make file. Now, make files are usually done in uh, uh, integrated development environments for you, so they're automated in some way. In this case, we're going to do, as usual, everything by hand so that you understand what is happening in the background. So what we need to do for making sure that we can do this is create a make file. Let's do this. Well, we can do this here. It's not going to be very big. Um, and a make file is a special file note the, the capital M that you can make and there is a utility that is part of the system then that will be able to allow you to create or to create your executable in a much nicer fashion and a make file and this is the first important thing that you need to remember requires tabs and up until now when we here in this case press tab we um, automatically added two spaces as you can see here Now this is bad because in the make file we really need tabs. Uh, that's why, and this is very important that uh, we can uh, that we show you how to do this. You press Escape Q, and then you should see uh, an acknowledgement here that the conversion of type tabs to spaces is disabled. So now we can make tabs here, which are actual tabs and not spaces. This is a little bit of a trick, um, but there is no real workaround in the way we're using the nano editor at the moment. So Escape. Q is what you need to press when you start making a make file. And then everything is fine. This works just for the current uh, nano edition right here. If you then go to this nano and press space, um, press tab, then you still have two spaces. So as soon as you make a make file, just press escape Q. That's the only trick you should have there. Now the first thing we're going to do in a make file is um, say what the main target is. And let's call that game to make it short. And the main target depends on several things. In this case, the main uh, target requires two object files to be there, namely the line.object file and the scroll game.object file. So game is called here the target, and line.o and scroll game.o are both the, um, the object files or the dependencies that you need for doing this. So if those two files are not there, it will look for a way to make those later. Then on the next line, we start with a tab. So this is an actual tab, not two spaces. And, with the, and after the tab, we basically show make file or show the make utility how these two should be used. And in this case, we can start with saying we want to create an executable called game. And we're going to um, link line the line.o and scroll game.o together and we're not forgetting the n curses library right so this is the command that we need um, for making our main executable game now as we see there are two dependencies line.o and that's also can be rephrased then as a target if we want to make line.o what do we need we need the header file and we need the CPP file. If those are missing, the make utility will complain. If those are there, the make utility will execute then what is following. In this case, we already know what we need. In this case, we want to just compile line.cpp uh, CPP, as we've seen before. And the same we do for the scroll game. .o target so scroll game.o requires scroll game.cpp and we supply in the make file uh, file uh, the way how to do this so we show it like this 
Now, most make files are a lot more complex because they have you know, certain variables, you can tweak a lot of things, but this is the most basic way you can create a make file for our example. Now let's write this out and hope that I did not make any mistakes. So once we go out of there, instead of creating these three lines to um, start our program, we can just press make. And in this case, make will do everything that is required. As we see here, it's uh, created our line and it created then uh, the final thing over here. Now it created the line. If we do make again, it will automatically see that it's up to date, that everything is still the same way as before. If you start changing this file over here, we add a couple of spaces, this um, uh, file over here has changed. If we do make again, it will notice this automatically and create the executable for us. So from now on, for our game, but also for our more complex pro uh, programs, we're going to use the make utility to do all of this. But remember that in the background, there is this make file that steers whatever we're doing. And in the make file are the single commands that we've been using up until now. 